This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 29. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. The topic of the week this week is Understanding a Holistic Approach to Natural Vision Improvement. And in the question of the week in the second half of the podcast, we're going to be dealing with a question, actually several questions we've gotten over the over the last year about positive lens therapy or plus lens therapy. So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you this week? Well, once again, my house is getting probably more healing than I am right now. But uh, <laughs> but I developed actually a new uh, way of doing eye exercises. I also went and uh, visited my mother over the holiday weekend. Nice. You didn't get LASIK, did you? I did not get LASIK, no. <laughs> you didn't just, just solve it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, I forgot all of my... I, well, I got up at five in the morning to uh, to get to the train, which I missed after, actually. So um, that was a that was a bad day. But um, I didn't bring any of my tools, you know, my glasses, paper, uh-huh. any of that stuff. So I'm like, oh boy, I've got all this time on trains and buses, and I started using my hands. This is like it's like taking healing into your own hands. I know it's a little silly. Literally, literally. <laughs> so instead of the black piece of paper in the middle of my forehead i put my i did it just now in front of you i put my palm uh across my with basically the middle of my hand kind as, of between as, your eyes yeah oh not like you're palming no 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 this is to replace the medium-sized black paper for uh stimulating periphery so i would sit on the bus with the traffic streaming by on both sides with the palm of my hand Okay. Covering basically sort of the the heel of the palm comes down to the base, uh, the tip of your nose. Right. And so that creates uh, central obstruction uh, on okay. both eyes, right? With your palm. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think I've, I've tried that a couple of times. Um, and I guess, I guess I just. You always have your black paper. So what the hell? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm the black paper king. Yeah. And, and then I went, well, this looks weird, but no weirder than a piece of black paper on your forehead so um yeah, that's true and you could uh, well who knows why you would be doing this but anyway and if, well, in fact in san francisco it would mean that you're normal yeah right <laughs> <laughs> that's just a whole you're, different you're, level of, of well, Francis- strange in san francisco in san francisco you're palming your third eye right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe that's berkeley maybe you have to maybe berkeley. that's berkeley yeah <laughs> so i did that one first thought okay this is peripheral it's like oh uh-huh. i could do i could do eye obstruction so i just shifted my palm over ah. and now i'm obstructing my right eye and looking at I can see like the uh, lines in in the palm of my hand, so I'm stimulating the right eye still by looking at the palm. Ah. But I was using my uh, left eye predominantly. Tell you what, though, I hate to say it. Maybe a couple of months ago, we had a question about palming one eye that I remember that you ridiculed slightly. <laughs> I did. And, and now uh, oh, you're right. And now you're doing exactly the well, same. Well, no, thing. it's not. It's obstruction. <laughs> it's obstruction. That's true. Not palming. You're not resting it. No, I wasn't. But you could. You could now palm and obstruct at the same time. You could. <laughs> <laughs> but keep your focus on one thing. Yeah. So, so that so, was the two of them. And then I did palming on the bus. Obviously, that's fairly easy to do. Okay. Um, with both hands. With both hands. And, <laughs> and that I've done before. And then distance looking is you don't need equipment for. So I was doing that on that trip. But I thought this was okay. You don't even need to remember yeah. to bring stuff with you. Yeah, and it was funny when you said that. I, I realized that only over the last few weeks that, say, I'm sitting on a bus and I sit near the window and I say, if, you know, I'm tired or whatever and I'm leaning Mm-hmm. my hands on my head and I think oh, do you know I could just move my hands a little bit further and, yeah and you I look... could obstruct my eye here yeah and, and I don't think you look strange at all I think people mm, just uh, maybe yeah because if you're looking out the window nobody's I looking I suppose if you lean you. on that hand you're right that could you're work looking out the window yeah uh, and I see a lot of people especially people in suits coming back from a long day of work right sitting there with their hands in their heads anyway yeah <laughs> so yeah, that was my trip um, and discovering heat, taking healing into my own hands. And, um, Literally. But I did want to say something since my house is wind, winding up. Uh-huh. And I realize I have all of this 
uh, knowledge about how to do a house, how how to remodel a house in a healthier way. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, this could be a whole podcast now. I think about it, but, <laughs> but you're not, not going to make it out of the what's left out of your juice uh, pulp, are you? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> start an organic house. All right, I'm just going to give people things to Google. No VOC paint. I mean, right now we are actually Will and I are in, in, inhaling a certain amount of fumes from my new floor, right? <laughs> and not the good kind being in San Francisco uh, no, on no. Hippie Hill. No, no, and uh, it's it's kind of obnoxious right now. I have like four air cleaners going, but if you if you look up no VOC paint things like that, mm-hmm. it really is much healthier if you're. So what's remodeling. healthy about it? Well, VOCs you don't, you are. Don't eat it, do you? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh. It's not rich in vitamin A. And oh, what is it called? It's volatile or organic uh, chemicals or something like that. Vol- oh, compounds. Sound, volatile organic compounds is what okay. VOCs stand for, and they're all they're basically what came off of turpentine. Those are the worst kinds. They right. they or you know the oil based things. Is it, is it better than lead paint? Yeah, nothing, <laughs> yeah. Ingesting lead paint's not so good, but <laughs> VOCs are not good to breathe in, and we all just decide we're going to put up with it when we do house stuff. Okay. And there's tons of it also in uh, this stuff called uh, uh, MDF, which okay. is um, basically particle board. Mm-hmm. Is full Medium of... Medium density fiber board. Exactly. That's there you my, go. my uh, GCSE te- technology coming back. All right. Exams. Good. Um, so avoiding going to plywood instead of MDF okay. is, um, is a better choice. And because of the fumes or because of the material? Because of the off gassing, okay. yeah, it's kind of a better material actually too. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's the off gassing of those VOCs, and particularly there was a formaldehyde issue. We we used formaldehyde in glues a lot. I think they've begun to ban it in California, in particular. They've begun to ban it in materials. Is, is that what's in marker pens? That <sighs> also has a real potent. Yeah, it's it true. Well. I think that is a VOC I use as well. In those when I teach. Yep. Yeah, kids are sitting there getting high whilst I'm trying to teach them. And you're probably getting a headache, yeah. <laughs> they probably learn more. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's, I guess if I had to say anything about my house experience, just look into VOCs and where you're getting them. And if you can get things made out of solid wood or at least plywood, and then you have to look in what is in the glue of the plywood because they put formaldehyde in glue. That's interesting, actually, that you say that because I guess that kind of goes along with our topic a little bit today about hmm. a holistic approach instead ah. of just thinking about one thing we're talking about just in general you know how can we improve our health and just things like what you're talking about using non-solvent right based products then we're reducing those chemicals and we're you know it, it's helping the body preventing it from getting sick and, and whatnot and the chemicals mm-hmm. Which, of course, is then affecting our eyes as a... Well, and I've even heard... My mother, in particular, had... Um, she's had corneal transplants and from, <laughs> from bad cataract surgeries and things like that. Mm-hmm. And she has noticed, like, a, a gardener sprayed weed killer that she didn't really want to have done. Yeah. And just went ahead and did it. And it affected her vision. She could wow. see how it affected her vision. It's amazing. Yeah. And they... Because I think... That, it, it spreads, isn't it? Even if you've got an organic farm next to a non-organic farm, mm-hmm. I don't know whether they can claim themselves as organic because the pesticides spread, spread over, yeah. over to the other side. Yeah. So I guess it kind of goes along with last week's lecture as well about the whole mm-hmm. organic thing and being conscious about the pesticides. It's just, it's just a different approach, right? We're, we're just sort of saying instead of shrinking down to just doing a couple of eye exercises, there really is a, a yeah. bigger picture here of a of making better choices, I guess. Well, and you could say maybe, you know, do your eye, hour of eye exercises a day and suddenly your gardener is spraying stuff in your garden and yeah. suddenly your vision gets worse. So you have to take those things. Or for me, like I could be spending, instead of buying this no VOC paint for more money, I could be polluting my, my whole nervous system mm-hmm. and my vision could get worse, you know, and maybe it would take a month, months or years to recover from. So... Yeah, and I guess the thing that these are external chemicals, you can imagine, and we're not going to go there. Uh, yeah, the internal yeah, chemicals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually ingesting chemicals is, yeah. is probably not great either. Yeah. But, so, uh, oh, good. So, so, and that's, that's good because it, it's important that, you know, that we decipher between eye exercises and, 
and general health as well, which is yeah. what we're going to be talking about anyway today. Yeah. Um, so that's good that you brought that up. Again, yeah. we didn't plan that. No, we didn't. <laughs> so how was your week? Uh, good. Really good, actually. I've, I've settled into my new home and uh, spent the first few days cleaning it like crazy. Um, and uh, I'm finally starting to get to a point now where my focus can shift back bit more to the exercises and this week was my first full week of getting into my full program right um, and I was really pleased to see that I was able to pick up where I left off before with my breakthrough and uh, if anything I'm seeing more benefits this week I'm really starting to get to grips with to know learning to use my periphery I suppose yeah um, shrinking the static not being as um, down about the the fuzzy spot areas, you know, where, mm-hmm. there's, where I can't see. It still gets a bit frustrating, but trying to turn that into motivation. Yeah. Um, I'm really trying to, a bit more emphasis on the brain now, which again, we're going to talk a bit about today, trying to get that more engaged, because obviously this is part of my vision that either I've not used in the last 15, 20 years, or I've never used it at all. I, you know, I don't know, I can't remember if I had that periphery before mm-hmm. um, and just learning like we said before learning to use it building confidence um, one big thing for me this week is I've moved to a completely new area that's right so now it's a complete test for my new periphery because before I knew my surroundings and now I'm somewhere completely new and should we admit that there are naked men running around your <laughs> <laughs> not not in, you know, we've got to finish the sentence there because they could have said in, you could have said in your back garden or something which... they're in your neighborhood they're not they're probably about four blocks away actually yeah no I think it's great I it's think... okay only in San Francisco right <laughs> we have to say it's it's been voted to be legal to be naked in San Francisco it is although they have they got a little bit strict they have yeah saying that you have to put a sheet down between your bum cheeks Oh, and a, and a and public a sidewalk or, yeah. or, or, or seat. <laughs> a seat. If you're, if you're sitting in a restaurant and you want to sit down, you have to put a sheet between your cheeks and the and the chair. Really? They've so, a, that's the amendment to the, <laughs> the, the public nakedness. Yeah, yeah. So they're pretty strict. Oh, yeah. I don't strict. know how people live here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so... Um, so yeah, I don't know whether the naked men are improving my eyesight. Or well, it would improve my eyesight. Probably it's like my periphery. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I did notice that even though it's a new place, I'm still being able to function walking down the street using my periphery. Um, I still have that level of confidence. One thing that was interesting is when I hit the shadows, where it's the light coming through the buildings. So you've got sunlight, then shadow, sunlight, right, shadow. Right. Just that like, bothers me too, by the way. Yeah. But what I noticed today as I was walking down, I was like, I'm using my periphery and I was really using it as an exercise. I'd, I'd done my exercises just before I left the house. So I really mm-hmm. engaged my periphery, then left and walking became the second part of my exercise. I was really using the periphery and engaging right. it. Right. And I noticed, I was like, just use the periphery, just use the periphery. And I, it was light, and then it went dark, and I looked down. Like, I just, I couldn't. Huh, yeah. I, I was too afraid, and I even felt my shins tense up. Like, it, wow. I, the phrase that came to mind, I was going to tell you that I've got the sensitive shins, which I really <laughs> never thought I would ever have. It's just a whole new level of, uh, wow. you know, you, you've got sensitive men, and now you've got sensitive shins. men with shins. shins. Sensitive shins. shins. <laughs> so, um yeah, and, and obviously that's from where I've bumped them so many times over the years. And oh. I've got so many dents in my bone, in my shin. Oh, and, right. you know, I've got scars on my shins from where I've hit you know, dishwashers and curbs and plant pots. And, and children. Yeah, <laughs> not so much children, actually. Not so much? I've oh. done quite well. All right. um, so, uh, yeah, so walking down the street, even though you know, I was telling myself not to look down, it went dark. And even though I was on a side street and I was pretty sure nothing was there. I was like, it could be a plant pot. It could be something sticking out the ground. It could be this. I I don't want to hit my shins on it. So I looked down. Right. So it's, it's just what we talked about in the first week. You pointed this out that probably one of my biggest challenges is rebuilding my confidence and getting over that fear. Mm -hmm. And I just, until I do that, until I, how can I expect to regain my periphery if I'm not going to use it? Mm-hmm. because I'm not at that point I'm not using my even though I could see it was a shadow it's dark it's a shadow but the fear made me check with my central vision so mm-hmm. um, if I never use my periphery how could I ever expect for yeah. it to come back right and, and strengthen and improve and maintain yeah and it's inevitable you reach these these points of 
anxiety or whatever it is. Yeah. Nervousness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and obviously you need to be sensible with it, like um, crossing the road or whatever. Yeah. As much as I want to be like, I'm just going to cross the road with my periphery. You know, there's no good having a periphery if you're dead. So. Right. <laughs> well, and, and as you, that other story you told, if you see a dark cylindrical object on the sidewalk, I would look down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think that the difference is now I checked. So the next time I do it, say tomorrow, I know to build my confidence. There's a good <clears throat> chance there's nothing there. It's just, just yeah. trust my vision yeah. and just walk. Yeah. Um, so obviously you need to be careful with doing that. I know. I remember I said that to my sister about a year ago. <laughs> she also has retinitis pigmentosa. She said, so I spoke to her on the phone. She said, so we'll, um, I did what you said and I was looking up and I was using my periphery and I was pushing the pram and walking down the street and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden I sort of smelt this funny oh, smell. And when no. I got home, she said she realized that she trod in dog poo oh, dear. and she cursed me for it and yeah. she stopped using her poo. Oh. <laughs> Only takes one little poo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's some life, some life lessons in that. Oh my goodness. Um, so anyway, some real, uh, real positive stuff this week. Um, Great. Been getting back into my juicing again, several, you know, six, six times a day, seven times a day, eating really healthy, been getting great sleep and wow. you know, my, my periphery is just feeling today in particular is the best it's been so far and I do this thing where I, I block my central vision and then go for little walks around the house ah. and try and identify objects and whatnot and again it's a new house and in fact it's smaller corridor so it's more right. difficult and smaller door frames and today for the first I've never done it before and today I navigated around the whole house with my central vision blocked, which is wow. a year ago. Wow. Um, you know, unthinkable yeah. Yeah. I could never do it. So, um, so really pleased about that. Feel, feeling really good. Very good. And excited about the direction that I'm going in. So I think it's about a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is understanding a holistic approach to natural vision improvement. And we've talked about this uh, a little bit before and uh, the importance of this, but we really felt that we wanted to dedicate some time to explaining a little bit more about how uh, holistically, meaning the body and mm -hmm. everything involved um, within us, and we're going to go through some specific titles in a minute, how that all affects our vision and that we need to shift this idea that to improve your eyesight, just work on the eyes. Right. And, and for those people who maybe came upon some eye condition without ever encountering the word holistic or a holistic approach or, or really believed in it, uh, we're encouraging you now to shift in that direction. Because I think the tendency, the general populace tends to believe that every part of the body is separate. It's sort of like a, a car when your carburetor is separate from yeah. your from your manifold. I don't know cars at all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I did. Uh, I, I came across, uh, I was listening to an audio book the other day, and he, he discussed a little bit on why that is. Mm. And he said it was because for medicine to study medicine, you know, when they started um, doing the cadavers right. and doing the dissections. dissections, is they had to, say, remove the heart. And deal with the heart, so that becomes that yeah. becomes a separate part, and then you deal with the liver and the leg mm -hmm. and the muscles, right? And then that's when um, the reason why I say this is because he's talking about the brain and, and how it develops um, and how you can change it. It's called neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. and he was saying how psychology had to become separate because they needed a separate science, the science of the psychology, right, psychology right, right. and it had to become separate. So what happened is you got the study of the body. And you got the study of the brain and the mind, mm -hmm. and then they became separate and they went in two different directions. Yeah. And what they're trying to do now is obviously merge the two mm -hmm. now that there's more um, understanding of how the two are so interconnected. Obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's the basis of holistic. Yeah. Is that that's putting those things, two things back together. Yeah. So, but we're sort of taking it a step further as well. And just like what Richard was saying about, you know, the chemicals and stuff, this is, this is something we've never really had to deal with over what the last 100 years, mm -hmm. um, when chemicals really started being developed 
I guess maybe it was more World War Two, was it, when they yeah, started using yeah, chemical warfare? More so, yeah. That's when fertilizer was invented, which used to be uh, nerve gas, in fact, and they took away yeah. a couple of the uh, chemicals, and now we use it as fertilizer, fertilizer which yeah, is yeah, great. Yeah. I love the idea of uh, eating nerve gas. <laughs> um, so, but holistic, just just a big approach yeah. um, to everything. So, over the next uh, five podcasts, we're going to focus on specific areas in which um, holistically we're saying can help improve your eyesight to help give us all a little bit of a better understanding of of what we're trying to do here Mm -hmm. um, in vision improvement. And uh, so the first one is the brain. Right, and we're going to be discussing how the brain contributes to vision. So we're bringing those, in, in each of these things, we're bringing what we're talking about, how it relates to vision. So how does the brain relate to vision? Uh, for one thing, there's memory. Uh, the memory is very important in your vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, um, I mean, something that I've been discovering over these last few weeks is how important memory is, in particular with the periphery and, and trusting that. And I noticed that, say I walk into a room, if I've been in it before with the central piece of paper on, mm-hmm. I could sort of say, oh, say I was in the kitchen, I was going to say, that's a stove, that's a fridge, that's a door frame. I can't really see it. I can sort of make out an outline, but sure enough, there's a clear enough image in my mind. And I'm sure it's better for people without the condition. It's obviously a lot clearer. Maybe they can see right. contrasts and maybe smaller details. But when you start putting that trust in the, in the memory, and yeah. it's just amazing how much how much memory really does attribute to vision. But anyway, we're, we're yeah, we'll, we'll go there. We'll, don't go too that. far now. <laughs> and then we're going to be talking. So we're going to be talking about how the brain contributes to vision memory and then um the phenomenon of the brain preferring strong uh strong areas of your vision over weak areas of your vision yeah yeah so. I, I like the word domination yeah domination yeah <laughs> <laughs> the dominating brain I yeah. know. Um, but what you said was a lot more poetic yes so the second thing that we're going to be looking at over these next five weeks and in the in the second part of the series is going to be the mind and how the mind can affect our vision so one of the first topics under the mind section is going to be motivation. And uh, if you think about it, I mean, motivation is is kind of the first block in the first place. I mean, just the fact that you're listening to this podcast now shows that you're one step closer to actually wanting to do the exercises and mm-hmm. improve your eyesight. But in order to, you know, really get the vision improvement going, you need that initial kick. Right. You're not going to do it just sitting on the sofa watching TV. Although we get questions like that all the time. <laughs> yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. So the second thing is the emotional aspect of vision improvement, um, and this is this is a huge part yeah, yeah. Um, because we tend to move away from things that makes us anxious or upset us or frustrate us. And again, and again, when we do this non-holistic approach, we think, oh, the emotions have nothing to do with your vision. Exactly. And, and, and it's those of us who improve our vision have proven that uh, proven that to be other otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and we we also find that a lot of people that are unsuccessful in this are tend to be people that can't push through that right. emotional barrier. So a re- really interesting one there. Yeah. And then the third one is habit, which you know we tend to talk about quite a bit, having mm-hmm. a positive habit, but it's also overcoming negative habits. I right. Guess. And then there's negative visual habits as well. So, so the third uh, series we're going to go through is the body, obviously a, a very important aspect of vision. Well, not obviously, because um, it's not obvious. Not everybody knows about it. Um, but as we've been talking about, I guess over quite a few of our lectures, really the important role that the whole body has on the vision. I mean, I guess you could argue that the eyes are part of the body. See, see how we, just how we talk about it, the eyes aren't part of the body almost. We can just almost abstract them out of the body. Yeah. So it's, it's almost a natural thing for us to try and do. So in that, we're going to be talking about how muscle tension plays a big role in, in you know poor vision and also well, more to the point, we're going to be talking about improving vision we want to try and be as positive as possible how if you can rid yourself of muscle tension it can also help improve blood flow which we'll talk about next yeah um and also you know how it can just improve our overall state of feeling and relaxation which sort of goes a little bit into posture doesn't it i guess which is the second part that we're yeah muscle about. muscle tension and posture send, tend to be related too and uh you and i were having a slight argument of which came it was like the chicken or the egg pro- <laughs> argument <laughs> yeah. like um is posture related to, well you know does does proper posture relieve muscle tension or is 
muscle relieving muscle tension yeah. improved posture and you could go both ways on that so yeah it's a really interesting debate I yeah look, i look forward to having that one oh, yeah we'll have that debate <laughs> and uh, the third part of uh, the body we're going to talk about is uh, having a nice healthy strong heart lungs and liver and some mm-hmm. of you might be a little bit confused on why how the heart relates to the eyes i guess blood flow makes sense yeah some might be even more confused about how the lungs can yeah. affect the eyes and Probably more so the liver. The liver is probably the most confusing, yeah. <laughs> but we'll, we'll try to unconfuse you. Yeah, we're, we're explaining that. So we look forward to explaining that to you. So uh, the fourth series, we're going to be looking at blood flow and how essential this is. I mean, obviously, if we didn't have blood flow, then uh, not much of anything would uh, happen in the body in the first place. So yeah, we're, it's yeah, a little bit obvious to talk about. But I guess in particular, it has some real key... Yeah, we're delivering uh, nutrients to um, the well, the whole body, but the eyes in particular. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about, and they're taking away waste products from the from the process of seeing, the phototransduction and other processes of seeing. Which, for a lot of you out there that do have conditions, that you will find that quite a lot of the time it's related to to blood flow and right. some sort of an issue with that. Um, again, I guess science tends to look at what's happening at that specific area. And they won't relate it to anything else. You know? Yeah. And they even know this stuff. I mean, sorry, I get a little belligerent about this <laughs> yeah. stuff. But like, Save it. Save it, the, <laughs> save it for the fourth series. <laughs> but like if you have glaucoma or something, they just say, oh, unfortunate you have glaucoma. Yeah. And never address the fact that maybe your poor blood flow yeah. contributed to that. Yeah. So anyway. I, I always love the, the, the analogy of going to the doctors with knee pain and just getting pills to get painkillers for the knee and, and not do anything else like that so yeah like yeah that's going to achieve anything I yeah yeah struggle with that one so with the third part is um is blood flow and conditions and how how poor blood flow can affect conditions and indeed how good blood flow can then improve, improve conditions. conditions as well or if you have a condition you can almost remove the symptoms of that condition just by improving your blood flow you definitely know? yeah definitely so then the fifth and last uh, episode that we're going to go through in the series of understanding a holistic approach to natural vision improvement is nutrition. Now, I know that we've just spent the last uh, three or four weeks going through nutrition, and we're really glad, actually, to see the amount of good feedback we've been getting. Yeah, it's been a popular series. Been. Yeah. Um, everyone's enjoyed, though, so it's good. It, it shows that there's a demand out there for that information, and I'm glad we sort of branched out a little bit there mm-hmm. and shared a little bit of our, our knowledge there on it, but... For this one, we're talking more about how nutrition um, directly affects, you know, our vision and how good nutrition can indeed help it. So the first thing, and we've already talked a little about it before, but how nutrition is the building blocks of our body and, of course, of our vision. Mm -hmm. Um, And by having good nutrition, then you're going to have healthy and uh, good looking eyes. Good looking eyes, that's good. (laughs) Which is always good to have. Yeah. And I never really thought about that actually until uh, one of our one of our good friends that we did um, a lecture series for down down in Alabama. Right. And uh, she she came up, she brought her daughter to us as well as herself Mm -hmm. to to work on her and and work on improving her eyesight. And one evening she said, You're doing well with your eye exercises, aren't you, Will? And I said, "Uh, yeah. She's like, Your eyes look really healthy. Huh. I, I agree with that, actually. She I know the, what she's saying, yeah. The white of your eyes look really white, and it's just something I'd never really thought yeah. of before, yeah. is having healthy-looking eyes. Well, actually, they're, they're more open, too, when they're healthier, too. Yeah. They're more relaxed and open-looking. We do looking. notice that with yeah. our clients, don't we? After a yeah. session, their eyes are a lot more open and mm-hmm. sort of receiving a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. So uh, so the second part is uh, is maintaining good vision. So, um, you know, you've got the building blocks of the body and, and the vision, you know, what makes it up. And then it's also having the, the longevity, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. the, conti- the, the body is continuously rejuvenating itself. So, right. Uh, so and we, as we age, we're, we're losing some of that. Um, exactly. Uh, that health. And so by pumping it with good nutrition, we may be delaying any kind of age-related conditions so and of course you know all the time we're thinking about healing i mean in particular we like the idea of the body can heal itself all we need to do is get out of the way yeah and it will do its job mm-hmm. and getting good nutrition is obviously a right big part of that is just allow the body to do what it does best which is regenerate heal and, and mm-hmm. function in the amazing way that we all know that it does right and nutrition just gives it sort of it's like a fire that we just have to get the right logs to burn to 
to keep going. So definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And as we said a little earlier, then if you neglect this nutrition aspect, then you may be encouraging vision conditions to come on, mm -hmm. uh, especially as you get older. And in the reverse is true too. If you come up with a vision, if you uh, come down with a vision condition, nutrition can really help uh, stave off at least the symptoms, which Will has discovered with his uh, vitamin A, beta carotene, and, yeah. and RP. Definitely. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, so that's going to be our. That was a very uh, quick summary there of what we'll be going over the next five weeks, and we hope you're going to join us, and we look forward to being able to explain. Uh, a little bit more on the holistic approach to vision improvement. Uh, now, by no means, I guess, will we say we're just strict holistic people. I mean, there's lots of different phrases, isn't there? Alternative right. medicine, holistic, self-healing. Yeah. Um, so, but we're just trying to explain a little bit more that the the idea of holistic meaning, you know, everything, I guess, bringing right. different parts together. I know myself, I guess I was a bit, um, ignorant of the word holistic to begin with because mm -hmm. in the UK I mean for me personally I'd never really heard of holistic um, approach or, or anything any sort of self-healing it was always go to the doctor he tells you how to solve the problem he gives you the pills mm -hmm. you go away and go come back in six weeks that was mm -hmm. always the there was no there was ne never anything more than that um, you know why would I ever question that you know what do I know right you know I was you know a teenager and um you know, what am I going to do? Say to this 50 year old guy that's spent 30 years practicing medicine and seven years at a medicine school. Well, actually, I think I should go and do this. And I don't, you know, I'm not too sure I should take those painkillers for my knee or whatever. Yeah. And also, I remember when I first came over to San Francisco and um, was, was studying here. And I said to my auntie uh, that Christmas time when I first went back, she said, mm -hmm. so what are you doing then? And I said, oh, I said, well, it's kind of a, a holistic approach hmm. um, to vision improvement. She said, oh, I don't, I don't agree with that holistic stuff. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. She said, watering down medicine. It just doesn't make any oh, sense to me. Oh, watering down medicine. So, wow. but that's, that's <clears throat> a separate kind, isn't it? That's sort of... Um, hmm, that's a whole debate, Will. Um, <laughs> uh, we could get into that. I, I know where she's coming from. I mean, when I hear the word holistic, I bristle a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of, well, I'm going to insult somebody now, but cr holding crystals over your head and, and saying, heal thyself, kind okay. of, or, uh, and maybe they do work, but <laughs> 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 there's a point where I think it do, does get out too far, and you do have to take into consideration what science is saying and what medicine mm -hmm. is saying. So it's, I think we're trying to hit that medium of, okay, uh, we're not just holding crystals over our heads, but we're looking at what the body does scientifically but we're but we're taking the extra step of saying the eyes are not separate from the rest of the body yeah. and that each part of the body contributes to the other parts of the body so i think it's important for our listeners and and for everyone to learn i mean even ourselves you know what is holistic mm -hmm. what is holistic healing um and for us holistic is incorporating as many things as possible good yeah to help healing it's it's bringing it's a holistic approach right so i think it's important that we decipher that um and that we we highlight yeah. that we're yeah. not um necessarily watering down medicine, medicine yeah, or yeah, anything, yeah. anything. And, and i think it just comes down to your own personal definition right um and i guess that's that's part of the downside of i never really want to label what we're doing because i kind of feel like it doesn't uh, necessarily fit which is i suppose why we're following the term self-healing so right much. right because it that doesn't seem to be as pigeonholed as right is it's it, broader it, yeah it hasn't been around as long maybe maybe that's it yeah um and it hasn't had a chance for yeah for people to really section it out so yeah, um yeah. yeah so a nice uh holistic summary there on mm -hmm. uh, on the holistic approach to self-healing that we're going to be going over the next few weeks great so I think it's about a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week is really a comb combination of questions we've had over the last year. And we've kind of pushed aside, but now we're going to address them kind of head on. And they relate to uh, positive lens therapy or plus lens therapy. Uh, this relates to a, a technique that several people have put out there where you wear essentially dime store 
reading glasses, mm -hmm. which have plus, you know, they range from plus, I think they're plus 0.5 to plus 4.5 or something like that. And just to clarify a little bit, you have plus lenses to, to it magnifies things. So that's, right. you know, if you're farsighted and you want to see from near. Right. And then you've got minus lenses. For myopia or nearsightedness, yeah. So you can see far. So it's to do with refractive errors. If you're a little bit unsure about this, you'll probably find some uh, some good videos if you just type in refractive errors into YouTube um, or even on Google. You'll, you'll be able to understand a little bit more on how glasses frames work and what we're talking about when we say plus and minus. And, and mainly this therapy relates to myopia or nearsightedness, that people... That's the people who would take up this therapy as somebody who's myopic. Yeah, it's for people trying to get rid of their glasses. Right. So the theory is you would put on... So let's say you have a minus 2 myopia, which is actually fairly low, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. If you have a minus 2 myopia and you take your glasses off, you're, you're seeing the world as if you as if a normally sighted... Someone who had no refractive errors put on plus 2 uh, dime store glasses. Okay. So now, so and say a normal person puts, so if you wanted to find out what your myopic friend sees like, and you have perfect vision, mm -hmm. put on those plus two lenses and you will see what the minus two myopic person sees when he takes off his glasses. Wow. So that's the way it all, the, the plus minus works. Mm -hmm. So if you're myopic, you're nearsighted, you have a minus two prescription. Number one, you're taking off your glasses. So now you're looking through plus two you put on plus two, let's say, or plus one, uh -huh. you've just upped your myopia even more. So now you see the world even blurrier than you did before. <laughs> Sounds great. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> and it's, I guess the theory is it's kind of like lifting heavy weights that um, by putting on those plus lenses, making your world blurrier, and then looking out into the distance, mm -hmm. you have just increased the load of getting your lenses to accommodate so that you can clear, clarify the image. Mm -hmm. I've looked at it. I mean, it's a, it's a curious therapy, so I've been intrigued by it, but I've never really uh, gone into it. It does seem a little extreme. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess. I guess we we must point out at this point that we, you know, we've we've had no training in in plus lens therapy. I, I've certainly, I've only got from it what I've heard from from other people that have tried right. it and from people that want to try it. So I, you know, at no point are we claiming to be experts in plus lens therapy, but it does seem to be, you know, when people look up vision improvement, you know, they go into Google and it throws out all this stuff on how you can improve your eyesight, and I guess. And quite rightly so, I guess people are trying a little bit of everything until mm -hmm. they get to something that works, which mm -hmm. is, you know, what I did. Yeah. Um, actually, no, I went straight to Mishnah. I was quite lucky. Was yeah, quite lucky. yeah, I did too, actually. Um, so I guess you sort of potter around until you find something that works. So we do get a lot of people asking this question. And uh, I mean, pretty much for everything with us, if we've not really tried and tested it ourselves, then we tend to not support it. Um, we try and I don't like going on hearsay. Yeah, a lot of the a big part of why we're so confident with our method and what we're doing to treat people um, or indeed to help people help themselves improve their own eyesight is the fact that we've seen it in practice day in, day out. We see it in ourselves. We see it in the people that we help and the people that help themselves. So so we can confidently comment on that sort of right, stuff. Right. Whereas something like plus lens therapy, I mean, the only thing I've, I've got a few in particular, I had a few. Uh, Twitter messages this week from uh, from a few people, and in particular, one said that they improved considerably, considerably, yeah, yeah. Um, by doing the plus lens therapy. So f my initial instinct is that it sounds like a lot of strain, right? And then, on the eye. and we we've had clients who all, all they do is take off their nearsighted glasses, you know, their minus glasses, and then they've created essentially a plus kind of situation, a blur, and that's too much for them. So then yeah. for them to then put on plus on top of that seems like you're really pushing the envelope there. Yeah, it's almost like a, a circuit circuit training, I guess. Maybe not mm -hmm. exercising for 15 years and then and yeah, again, jumping the gym in. and doing circuit training for yeah. several hours a day. Yeah. I guess you could do our exercises, do the palming, get the relaxation. Right. If you did then, that. And maybe then try a plus lens if you're not getting the results that you want. From True. The exercise. Well, and the plus lens therapy that I've seen, I've scanned a bit. They do have. It's not just wearing the glasses. They okay. do. They do eye rotations oh, and okay. palming and some sunning oh, and stuff right. too. So it's not unto itself. Right. 
But I'm guessing a lot of people don't do the rest of the exercises. They probably just <laughs> yeah. put on the lit glasses because yeah. that seems like the... If, if it's one thing we've learned, everyone wants the quick Exactly. The quick fix, and that's what know? this really is. In some ways, it's a quick okay. fix. Um, and that's the hope people have. So, but certainly, as, as we're saying, we know we're experts in this. If you've had any experience in this at all, positive or negative, then uh, feel free to send us an email at uh, info at envisionselfhealing.com. And uh, give us a bit more information. Um, yeah, no, we'd be you know, like to open to it. it. Any any books you might know, or indeed, if you're a practitioner in the method, and we've probably said something wrong or we've misunderstood, then certainly let us know, and we'll fill in our listeners when we uh, yeah. get any more information on it. But uh, we must say that our initial reaction is that you're creating excess strain, and really everything that a lot of our literature is all about avoiding strain, overcoming right. strain, right. Um, maintain eye health first and then from there you improve your eyesight right once you're at that that balanced state so for me um the idea of putting plus lenses on someone that's struggling to see anyway is uh, yeah um and we tend to i mean we tend just as a flat out we tend to not really agree with glasses anyway so right yeah and there's an emergency that's true emergency so we don't even like doing sunning through window glass so yeah putting on glasses as a therapy and there i mean there is also that the idea of macular degeneration through right plus lenses Mm -hmm. um and a couple of people have messaged and said that they read that it could also cause things like cataracts and and whatnot so again we don't know but um but certainly, I think we would recommend, obviously, the natural approach, <laughs> yeah. natural vision improvement yeah. uh, people ourselves. But um, yeah, feel free to have a look into it um, and let us know how you get on if it's something you feel you want to do. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us again on this week's podcast. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on uh, the next part of our understanding a holistic approach to natural vision improvement, where we're going to be looking at the brain specifically and how indeed how important that is for our natural vision improvement. You can always keep up to date with us on either our Twitter accounts or on our Facebook pages, our individual Facebook pages, or indeed our Facebook fan page, which can be found at Envision Self Healing. Just search for that in Facebook and you'll see a lot more of the pictures and a bit more of a community that we've got going on there, asking questions uh, throughout the week from other people. If you like what you heard on this episode and indeed you found it interesting, then you will probably also find our free ebook that you can find on our website at envisionselfhealing.com where we really do go through some of the basics of vision improvement and how indeed our approach of how you can improve your eyesight works and how we feel that a lot of the reasons why our vision isn't as good as it could be is sort of to do with our modern day lives. And uh, of course, that ebook is called A Modern Day Guide for Improving Eyesight. And you'll see exactly how to get your hands on one of those if you head over to the website. You can also check out free vision improvement programs on our website that we've been getting some great feedback about. And we're really glad that there's a lot of people out there really giving these programs a go and even more excited to see that they're seeing progress. So uh, if you're one of those people that are checking out our free programs and keep going, And indeed, keep us updated on how you're getting on. It's really exciting to see how well you're all doing out there. If you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube, then you can subscribe to our channel and you'll get one of these podcasts every week. And indeed, on iTunes, you can subscribe to us and we'll also get one of these sent out straight away to you every time we release them. So we hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast and we look forward to catching up with you all again next week. And good luck with your exercises this week and happy healing. And have a good week.